Good morning. Glad to have a few minutes together with you today. I'll be in the Bible in the Gospel of John, chapter 9, chapter 11, 12 in there. Uh, two familiar stories, one about a man born blind and another about Lazarus when he was raised from the dead. Uh, before we get there, uh, I just wanted to take a moment and and comment on on the culture. Now, of course, everything changes. The news changes so fast. But if you want to look at the last couple of years in America, evil has just been, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, rioting that's uh, that's not being um, treated by, you know, by law enforcement. And um, a lot of, a lot of uh, evil that's not being responded to. And, and um, you know, then there's some mothers who are, who are parents showing up at school board meetings who are being put on terrorist lists. And then you have um, many, many 40, 50 attacks on pro-life um, clinics and different things like that. And no, nobody's even party talking about those in the news. And, um, and there's, a, you know, like, like anarchy among the authorities in our land. Uh, lawlessness is anarchy is lawlessness. And you know, leaders can be lawless. It's not just the followers. And I think we're in a day of lawless leaders. They don't, you know, they're, we've got people in high up in government who are attacking our Supreme Court, not defending or hardly defending our Supreme Court justices. And, and um, the news doesn't pay any attention to them being attacked. And, and uh, you know, when, when good and right um, starts getting a hold, then, then evil fights and gets so angry. And um, that's what I talk about there in John today, to realize that when you see the lashing out and the anger, remember, remember the story, and I don't have the reference in front of me, when um, the, Jesus is up in the Mount of Transfiguration, he comes down, there's a man with a demon-possessed boy, and, and um, Jesus said, bring him to me. And when he was coming near to the person of Christ, he throws, the, the devil throws him on the ground, wallowing and foaming. And uh, boy, you know what? Evil does not like right. Dark does not like light. And 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 when when the Supreme Court makes two huge decisions for freedom, for for pro life, and for Second Amendment rights, and and big decisions, and they've made some other pretty pretty good decisions. I'm not saying I agree with every decision they make, but they made some pretty landmark decisions. And um, and it wasn't uh, credit to the, the the president or anybody else. It just God put the right people in the right place, and it happened. Uh, of course, our president and vice president wouldn't have approved either one of those big things, but but God got some things done. And so, as God is working to get good done, you can bet that the that the devil is working to attack and to, to you know to bring uh, violence or whatever against. It's either verbal or political, or news media, social media attacks, and the devil hates right. And, and, and you've heard me say this often, but you can always identify um, where people are by certain character traits. And one of those character traits is a love for freedom or a desire to, to take away freedom. Because God is very, very much in, in, in the world of freedom. He's not forcing anybody to trust his son as savior. He's not pushing anybody. If you don't want to go to church, don't. If you don't want to get saved, don't. Uh, Adam and Eve, here's the first. Somebody said one day to me, why, if God's so good, why did he put that tree in the garden where Adam and Eve could eat it and, and mess everything up? So they were free. They were free. They, they, had, they had a choice to eat or not eat. They had a choice to obey God or they had a choice to disobey God. God is, God is big in this thing of freedom. You read the Bible, you see so much freedom. Um, and, and so, of course, tyranny, uh, tyrannical governments, dictators, demagogues, they, they want to rule and they want to conquer and, and they want to put people under their thumb. And uh, you know, that's why in our church, I, I get uh, people say things about me being the ultimate dictator or whatever. But, but you ask my staff and and our adult Sunday school teachers or church ministry leaders. There's a few things, you know, just in regard to preaching the Bible, I may be very strong on, but, but the vast majority of our ministry, uh, I don't even have a vote in it. I just, whatever people want to do. And um, uh, I, I want, if uh, I was like uh, 
or around the 4th of July. I was hoping for a 4th of July picnic and something just, just to rally some more patriotism. And, and um, I don't know who I was meeting with, either our staff or some group of people. And, and uh, they, they thought maybe a day doing nothing would be good. And they said, why don't we do something on Sunday night? All right, good. We'll throw my idea out the window. And, um, and uh, it, it's our church. And in this home, it's our family. And, um, you know, Tom Malone, he, he said about his wife and him, they've been married at that time 50, 60 years, I think. And he said, we made a decision when we got married. My wife can make all the small day-to-day -day decisions. If there's any big decisions I can make. And he said in 60 years, never been a big decision needed to be made. And he was teasing, of course. But, but, um, but in the home, it's our home. My wife and I make decisions together. But most of the decisions, I don't have an opinion. Now, outside, I do like the yard. And uh, you've seen me record some of these morning moments outside. <clears throat> I like, uh, that's just kind of a quiet thing for me. It's something to get my mind off everything. But, but I don't care, you know, the kind of flooring, uh, the kind of color of paint. I, I'm, a, I'm a bright color person and it's fashionable to be white and, and light. And, and so you see what we've got. And uh, I, don't, I don't have strong opinions about very many things. And, but you see, I think freedom is the thing. You give people that chance and you can tell. And then there's, there's quite a few character traits you can, um, you can pick. I just talked about that one, but freedom. And so anyway, looking at your Bible in John chapter nine, and I'm not at a, at a desk here where I've got a place, so I've got a couple of notes with me, but in John chapter nine, and I don't know if I'll get to my notes, but um, John chapter nine, there's a man born blind. The disciples, like humanity, who did the who was bad, you know, the parents or whatever. Who was the one who was uh, bad that this boy was born blind? And Jesus says in verse three, neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jesus said, this boy, and now he's a man, but this child was born blind and lived his whole life to adulthood blind in the first century. There wasn't Braille. There weren't special schools for the blind. I mean, blindness means you're, you're living off people. You're a beggar. You're living at home. And you're not, very unlikely you're going to get married, I would assume. I don't know. I didn't live there. But, <clears throat> but in a day when you really had to depend on one another to have a home and a family and an income, um, my spouse might end up blind and I'm married to him. But I'm not sure I would choose a blind spouse. And in that era, in that culture, it would be very difficult. Um, but all this, that this young man birthed all the way through, he didn't get to go to school like other people did. He didn't have jobs like other people did. And, and now he's an adult and he's begging. And, um, and the disciples said, who sinned, him or his parents? And Jesus said, no, 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 neither. They didn't sin. This is for the glory of God. And I know in, in our church, like any organization, a church or a business, there's people that have burdens. And some of these things come from outside. We have no control over them. It just happens. It just things, difficult things happen to us. And you know what's great about this? Because there's some anxiety that you can feel. And, and like with the government and, and, and with uh, you know global scariness and the economy and the price of gas and the price of food. And, and, uh, and don't listen to news too much. You know, the sh scare... Uh, boy, there's not this or that on the shelves, and what are we going to do? And, and and I don't know. We we might face some some difficult times, but I know this: God's still good. Uh, I know this in the Psalms. David said, "I have been young, and now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaking, saken, nor his seed begging bread." God will take care of the, of His children, and and don't don't live a life of fear. And when those things happen, and I mean big things, I'm not talking about you got a flat tire <laughs> a while back. One of our couples coming home from vacation and they're up in a real hot area north of us. If you know where we live in Wildemar here, up north, up, um, I think they were on 299, but up, up north toward, really headed out toward Death Valley. Death Valley would be a little more to the east. And they had two blowouts. And uh, oh, we talk about throwing a wrench. It had to be a 100, 100 plus degrees outside. And uh, But I don't want to talk about that kind of problem. I'm talking about serious. I'm talking about having your child born blind. That's a big problem. And um, he says, God's in this. Now you trust him. You trust him. And um, 
And I don't know what burdens you're carrying today, but I know this, you just walk with God. Be in your Bible, if you're able to, be in church. Um, live the Christian life as best as you're able to. None of us can be perfect at it. But, but he says there at the end of verse three, that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And if you turn over um, a page to, to, to John chapter 11, uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, two sisters and a brother, they were very good friends of Jesus and Lazarus is very sick, critically sick and he was dying. They send word to Jesus. And, if, and, and you know, you see a loved one nearing death, especially a younger loved one, which we assume these guys were, and you look at verse four, when Jesus heard, heard that, he said, this sickness is not in a death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God might be glorified. This is for the glory of God and that Jesus would be glorified. But it's hard to take a, a very, very serious illness and say, boy, God's gonna get the glory here. And you know, if you heard someone say that, you'd think, well, that's nonsense. You're sick, you need to get better, this is terrible. Nobody wants a child that, uh, nobody wants their child to be born blind. It happens, it, of course it happens, but, but it's a tragedy. Yet God says, this is, this is that the works of God should be shown. This is, gonna, this is gonna honor God. And now this guy's critically ill, maybe terminally ill. And what comes from it? Um, he says this thing in verse four, it's for the glory of God and that the son of God might be glorified. Now, and of course he dies. And three days later, Jesus shows up after Lazarus been in the tomb three days. Very, very sad days. Very difficult days and lonely days. And, and there are those times that, that come into our lives and, and we don't understand. Um, I was reading through some missionary letters, these dear people we support. And one, of our, one of our faithful men, Charlie Best, um, we've supported him for many years. Um, Brother Vest was in real estate. He was just a businessman and his wife uh, got cancer and, and she passed away. And he was about, I'm gonna say about 50. And what a, what a difficulty, what a tragedy. And he had on a couple of occasions gone to the Philippines, just helping out missionaries, visiting, just, it's just, um, it's a neat thing to go to the Philippines. The Phil it's, it's poor, but the people are the sweetest thing there is. And, and the churches are so just gracious and they're just great people. And um, I love going to the Philippines. Um, I miss ice, ice, ice cold soda. <laughs> you know, I go to these convenience stores and I fill the cup up halfway with ice and the rest with soda. I did, and you don't get a lot of that in the Philippines. But um, I, love, I love being there, I love being with the people. So Brother Vest, he's single, his kids are grown. And um, he just believed God called him. He packed up everything, went to the Philippines, bought some land, started a church, helped the people. They built a building and, and I've preached for him. And, and I've had, uh, my daughters were with me one time there at his church singing and preaching. And, and, um, and we had a big group there, in fact, and, um, just a, a great church. Well, while he's there, he stumbles across the path of a single lady who graduated from college and was teaching on the mission field and living with her sister and brother-in-law, or brother and sister-in-law, I forget the details, that Kay, but uh, Kay, he eventually married Kay, and they had a little girl, Brianna, Brianna, if I remember remembering right, and and um, so there they are on the mission field, and he went through some very difficult days to end up there, and has a very good, it's a 20-year-old church now that still there, he's not pastoring, it's turned over to a Filipino man that I know, good church in the city of Bacolod. Well, um, he has, transitioned into a ministry of teaching and training pastors and, and we support several missionaries who do that it's a great need um, and just one of the recent letters um, brother best's son chad has got throat cancer and i think oh you know this guy's carried some burdens already and and um he's 75 now and, and he's got some heartaches and he's had some and, and now this and he's got his own health problems of course but uh, if you think of it, you pray for Chad Vest, brother Charlie Vest, the son. And, but, you know, these people that carry these loads, they're not without God's knowledge. 
Um, now, if, if I get drunk and I go run into somebody and cause a tragic accident, that's my fault. But if it's, if it's Christians I hit, God knew, and God's in it, and God's going to take care of them in his own way, in his own plans. And I know sometimes we struggle with the sovereignty of God, but I just want to tell you something. God's good, and uh, he is faithful. And, and God, in both these cases, the death of a brother and the child born blind who spends all of his youth into whatever age of adult the guy was in John chapter 9, those are two tragedies. And in both cases, Jesus, Jesus said, I've got this. This is going to work out okay. And I don't know what you're facing, but it's going to be okay. And I don't know what loneliness, I don't know what financial pressures. Um, it, it's going to be, God is good. And again, we, we're getting near the end, and there's going to be this global craziness, and who knows how it's going to show up. But, but if, we're, if we're approaching the rapture, which I believe we are, uh, with all the global things going on, uh, we could see some pretty, pretty difficult days. But you know what? God is faithful. And a thousand years from now, are we going to care? Um, are we going to care that um, we didn't get chocolate? We had to, had to settle for, you know, whatever it is and, and replace it. I just don't know what else there is besides chocolate ice cream. And, and, um, but we are so blessed. Uh, let's keep our faith. Let's keep trusting in God. When you look at these stories in John 9, John 11, and I want you to understand, God is alive, and he is faithful, and he'll see us through. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for spending a few minutes together.